you know, being able to drive these units a little bit now myself and, and get to experience them. You know, I, I'd love the chance to, you have a few broken down over here, just yeah. how do they come together? You know, I'm starting to really see it now more that you've talked me through the, the ways you have to do these independent movements. Um, let's maybe show yeah, us a yeah. little bit of broken down. So everything, um, you know, when we get a new order in, um, we account for you know, various parts and components and assemblies that are going into that order. Okay. And we've developed systems and refined it over the years in order to not only maintain inventory and account for it, but um, you know how to plan and prep for a build. Right. Um, and so once chassis are produced over at the Make Team shop, which yep. we visited earlier, yep. um, go to powder, and they come back here, um, there's a lot of prep work that goes on before we actually get to work building the unit. Okay. Um, first is the, the cockpit itself. So this is the assembly we were talking about earlier. Yep. Um, you can see it's sitting on a cart here that we can move around and work on the unit itself. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is this is the piece here. Oh, oh you have these little integrated... Yeah, so we've got this little, this little cradle system here we set the cockpit on. <laughs> so... Uh, you guys really did think about that. It's, uh, you can get up underneath it and work on it while you're mm -hmm. up under there. And um, it's just, it's a great little, uh, great little tool. Shop. Yep, great little tool to kind of get, get working on it. Um, but we, we pull all of our um, parts onto carts here too. So right. a lot of parts. Um, and well, one thing too, you do this all in house. So we got a yeah. chance to visit your other shop. Yep. They're welding, fabricating, getting all yes. the actual raw metal together. Yep. You didn't outsource that to another company. Nope. You guys would never figured, want to figured out how to do it. And that's your passion. We got to talk a little bit more. You love the design side of yep. this, right? And this is yep. so you've got to figure out all the bends and all the way the metal should work. And then now your guys are executing. Those guys know a lot more about it than I do, though. I right. mean, so I started you have it. The theory, right? They still yeah, they they know the numbers. Yeah. they know the techniques. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we we have the same, you know, the few guys at our shop that build the roll cages, I could never do that, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Tim gives them feedback on how he wants to sit in a rally car, and they bend the metal the way that he needs it done to make it happen, and yep. that's something that you've done the same thing with your, your system here, which is amazing. So this is the where the seat goes, the kind of the center of the cockpit. Yeah, so there'd be a visual system mounted up front here, uh, seat, pedals, you know, steering wheel, shifter. So this is just sort of prepped and very raw. A okay. uh, bunch of parts come onto it and bolt onto this cockpit to create a, a you know, final assembly okay. from essentially these racks of parts that we pull here. Okay. Um, it depends on what the client spec and what they, what they ordered and sometimes there's customizations and things that we account for. Um, so, you know, that's, that's sort of the first step is just preparation and pulling the stuff together to get ready. We build our own PCs in-house um, during, during the pandemic um, and the crypto craze. We were unable to buy video cards, right. um, so we had to shift gears uh, for a couple years. But uh, we've come back to building our own PCs. Um, we do uh, spend quite a bit of time doing that and make sure that the components and the PCs are uh, what we want. Um, we also build our own pedal sets. So uh, this is an example of one of the pedal sets we build. Uh, it's a three pedal set with a clutch. For you kids that don't know what that pedal is, that's a clutch on the <laughs> left there. Um, and then a two pedal set as well for you know paddle shifter only kind of cars. Um, so it's tilt and based. Um, just one of the things that we prep before a build. And this is generally where we would prepare all the small parts and kind of do some Pre-assembly, a small parts assembly, and that kind of thing. Um, this is our well-organized hardware section here. Um, lots and lots of stainless steel hardware. Um, we've standardized on stainless about 10 years ago, but we still have remnants of some of the, you know, black oxide parts and things like that in there. Um, but then ultimately, when a sim, you know, comes back from powder, like maybe the silver unit here. Yeah. You can see um, the kind of the distinction between the red unit and the silver unit. The silver being roll frame, yaw frame, base frame. We just talked about those a few minutes ago. Um, we put that together first. Um, cockpit is sort of prepped separately. Okay. And once the, um, once the cockpit reaches a certain phase, we put it into the, the main assembly here. Um, the small footprint units, which I don't have one currently in, in build progress, but Small footprint units uh, happen the same way. The CT right. units build the uh, all the mechanicals below, the yaw halo, and the uprights, and then the cockpit goes in sort of as the last primary assembly step. Something I've wondered and I've noticed, you're all three three screens. There's 
massive curved screens now. Like, have you played with, like, well, why is there, why did you go with the three screen setup? So, um, you know, back in 2008, when we first brought Apex to market, um, we had a triple screen setup then, but there was no manufacturer making these size screens. That's just a 43 inch Oris monitor, which can do 144 um, hertz per second, you know, right. res the, the yeah. refresh rate. Right. And back then, um, back in 2008, you had like 24 inch monitors, 27 inch came out sort of around that right. time as well. And, you know, we basically used an off the shelf mount and that was all you got. And it was, you know, this much graphic. And then um, some years later, about 2014, uh, the idea of having a much bigger field of view right. was desirous. Right. Um, and televisions actually worked in a fashion with PCs back then that right. was acceptable. It wasn't the best, but it was acceptable. Sure. Uh, limited by the refresh rate at 60 hertz, but you can get a large field of view, both vertically and horizontally. Hmm. Um, so that was the first system we built of uh, three screens was was literally televisions some, some clients don't want triple screens or they don't have the room or they are keen on vr so um okay. probably one of the most well-known amateur race car drivers is ben keating yep. um sports car racing right. um and ben is he is sold on vr he hmm. uses it um in his sim and his apex six okay. um so when we built his sim we just put a single screen on there so he can interact with Windows and get his right. programs running. But when he's in the car racing, he's in his VR system. Huh. And that's just what he likes, and that's right. cool. Right. Um, so we try to accommodate what our clients want to do. That's an amazing thing you've done here, which I've seen now all of your, you've got your core base model, and then you just can plug and play everything else based mm -hmm. on the client's need, yeah, right? That's right? You're not dictating to the client everything they should. You know what's gonna work, and you can advise them of yeah, things. Absolutely. But yeah. I like it this way, this guy likes it that way, and yeah. you've- and then you Yeah, the and then you offer them a, a, a package, or you offer right. them sort of a standard product that has all the things that we think you should have. Right. And for the folks that don't want to think about it, they just buy that. Right. But for the ones that are a little bit more into learning about the various options and the various components, they get to choose what they want to use in a SimCraft unit too. So um, try to try to remain flexible um, in our in our product uh, at all times. Some of the things that you've talked about before was you kind of overbuilt it, which is like yep. what we like to hear in rally racing. Yep. We, we want overbuilt stuff. Yep. So what's overbuilt? What are your what do you expect? Uh, owners to maintain what's the oil change you know every 5,000 miles in this this bad boy well uh, we'd like to say the maintenance is minimal if if not none like wow. zero I mean that's that's essentially the goal right I mean sure. these are these are units that have a lot of different components and parts and the more we can do to make it user friendly for our clients we pay attention to that right. you know usability reliability and ease of use okay. or maintenance sort of the key tenets of, of our philosophy when we make decisions about product. Okay. So the actuators themselves, it's sort of the first thing people assume need main maintenance, and that's untrue. Um, they're typically used in industrial automation. They're self-lubricating. Um, the, the rod ends that we use, the heim joints, are sealed, uh, Teflon lined. You, there's no um, Zeus fasteners on there. You can, you know, or what do they call those, the little, the little um, uh, nipples that you put oil oh, into. Right. Yeah. Um, there's no, you know, you don't have to do any of that here. It's all sort of ready to go. Yep. The bearings we use here inside the, these assemblies uh, are sealed and don't require lubrication. Hmm. The one thing that might require some lube from time to time would be the uh, exposed rails for the linear action, hmm. right? So you have a, a surge system that's riding on a linear rail system. Um, so we would, you know, we put some lube on there initially and then that might need a little bit of extra lube <laughs> over the years. Um, but other than that, the only other thing I've noticed that um, uh, sometimes needs a little <laughs> very quick maintenance is the, the torsion spring on the throttle gets squeaky. Oh, okay. So a little WD-40, <laughs> and you're done. So, I mean, that's sort of our default position when, right. we're, when we're selecting a part is we want this to last. Right. We warranty the chassis forever. Really? Forever. That's confidence right there. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and then on top of that, like, so all these consumer available off the shelf products like the monitors you can go to Amazon and buy those if you want yeah. but um, we they come with a one-year manufacturing warranty right. and we offer a three-year warranty on those 
Because you know they're that good. Because we know they work. Right. We know they're going to last. Right. Um, and, you know, it just gives our clients a peace of mind that they're spending quite a bit of money on a product like this, then, you know, we got their back. Yeah, no, what you guys have built here is just an amazing focus on quality and focus on the end user, you know, actual experience. And, you know, I think that's, for us at Team O'Neill, we, we always try to make sure people walk away with real experience and an ability to go out in the real world and go racing. And you've kind of took that same focus with a sim unit, right? Yeah. Because you care about the guys actually going out and going real racing. Like it's we do. Not, it's yeah. not just to use your product and sit at home. It's to use your product, train at home, and then go out in the real world and, and test and test A hundred percent, yeah. And which I mean, is it's amazing. Our, our reputation is everything, right. you know? And so the racing world's a small world. <laughs> um, any client that, you know, wants to trust us with their sim, right. um, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to make sure that they're happy and uh, that they're trained and that they're supported. Wow, Sean, thank you so much for showing us these units. I answered a lot of questions I had about sim units and, and your level of experience and knowledge is amazing. It's something that, you know, we look forward to hearing your guys' input and questions in our comment section. And, and we are gonna do some more videos here about things that you should think about when you buy sim, a sim unit. So look forward for that other video and I'm gonna get a chance to drive these too. So okay. we'll check those out in our other videos. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thanks, thanks for coming. We'll see you, see you guys soon.